Hello there, right here we have a brand new 1.17 snapshot. This is 21W05A. This is part of the Caves and Cliffs update and we have a bunch of new blocks in the game, including new farms like Moss Carpet and Farmable Copper. As always, when a new snapshot comes out, we hop on here to our snapshot testing server, which is open to the viewers. We will be testing all the new stuff during my live stream. Big thanks to Bisect Hosting for partnering with me and providing amazing Minecraft servers and ones for other games. You can find their link down in the description. And if you use the code RAY, you can get 30% off your first month and supports me and the server. I'll see you guys right after this video. We have a new bush-like block in the game. This is called an azalea. And this is actually a real life plant that has big flowers. There's also a flowering variation of it. There's also the leaf variation of the large plants which are called flowering azalea leaves. And there's also the non-flowering variation of the leaf, which is similar to other tree leaves. We also have drip leaves, which are the ones they showed during the Minecraft live event that tip over and drop entities that are on top of them. There is a big drip leaf, and there's also a small drip leaf. The small ones need to be planted into water like this. You can see it starts down here, and it actually comes up into this block right here, kind of like a too high flower. And if you break this, it'll actually remove the water as well. That probably is a bug currently. It can also be grown on clay, so you can place it like this. Otherwise, it doesn't grow on other blocks. And these little ones will grow into the big ones. You can also grow the little ones into a big one by bow milling them. Or you can turn a big one into an even taller one by bow milling it. Now you can avoid these things from tipping the player off of them by crouching on them or by continually jumping on them. And after they drop you, after a little short while, they will tilt back up again and reset. So it's kind of a nice little clock. If you hit the top of the big drip leaf with the projectile, it will break off. You see it drops an item. The little ones are not affected by it or the stems of these. And there's a chance that a wandering trader will actually sell the small drip leaf. Which means we could get this in a skyblock world. And you can automatically bone mill the, the small drip leaf by using a dispenser and bone mill. And you can use this to grow them too. Guys, we finally got the moss carpet. That's what they call this new block that we've seen in the Minecraft live event that kind of covers up the tops of blocks to make it look like there is grass. A lot of people have wanted this. That way they could cover up any type of light source without having to use a green carpet. Besides the moss carpet, there is also the moss block, which has the same texture, but on all sides. So people that kind of want the green look of grass to wrap around on all sides of the dirt, this is a good block to use. Just by having two moss blocks in your crafting inventory, you can craft up three moss carpets, very similar to normal carpet and wool blocks. Now if you bone mill this new moss block, you can actually get these azalea to grow on top of it. And you can also get the moss carpet to grow on top of it. If you look at this grass, this is actually normal grass, but it does have a tag over here on the right hand side where it says azalea log placeable. It means that it could probably be placed on some azalea log that we see probably on the ground. And it also has the tag lush plants replaceable. There I just got these two little azalea bushes. And they do blend in very well with the moss block. You can see the transition. There I got some flowering ones, also got some moss carpet. So just by shifting the floor, you can make all these blocks pop off for an automatic azalea and moss carpet farm. And you can automate the process of getting these blocks with the dispenser and bone mill. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on upcoming videos where I show off these new 1.17 farms. We also got cave vines and glowberries. Cave vines grow down from the ceiling like weeping vines. And when they grow, there is a chance that they'll produce this new food source, which is glowberries. So if I go ahead and just right click this vine, you can see it got some inventory. And if we go ahead and eat this, it will give us one haunches of food. Besides players being able to eat it, fox can also eat it. And just like sweet berries, foxes can also harvest the berries off of them for you. And by harvesting the berries, you can replant them on the ceiling or up against other ones to make the actual cave vines. And if you bone mill them, they will produce the berries. And as you can see, the berries produce light, which is a light level of 14. Now you can use a dispenser with bone mill to, to make an automatic glow berry farm. But similar to sweet berries, you have to right click it to harvest the berry off of the vine. There's also a spore blossom which can be placed on the ceiling of blocks and produce these really cool particles. It currently doesn't have the open and close like we've seen during the Minecraft live event. There's also two more new blocks in game. This is root block, which is like a bunch of tangled roots and a big block. And hanging roots, which you can place on the ceiling. 
All these things are going to be used in the upcoming cave generation. And there's a special cave called the Lush Caves. The more changes that they made in Snapshot is that stone cutters can now work on all variants of the copper. They also changed the drown loot table so that it has a chance to drop the copper ingot. There you see, we just got one. Now this replaces the gold ingot in the loot table, but it has to be a player kill in order to get this. This is pretty awesome, so now people can actually get large amounts of copper without having to solely depend on mining it up. So you can use one of my super fast drown farms to obtain large amounts of this. They made some changes to powder snow, so flame arrows now get extinguished when they go through them. Looks like it's a bit iffy. Sometimes it works when going through it, sometimes it doesn't, but if it like collides with it, then it definitely goes out like this one. Another change it made is that skeletons will convert into strays when they sit in the powder snow. There you go, you see you convert it over. Powder snow is now pushable. You can push it with pistons or it could connect to sticky blocks or honey. You could do some automating of like pushing this inside of a mob or not. Fox can also now walk on top of it and won't sink down inside of it. Some other technical changes that they made is that they improve performance when using many overrides on an item model. And they change copper's oxidization so that it's now a random tick effect and is affected by random tick speed. So by changing this game rule, you can make it convert over faster. Also in the snapshot, they fix a whole bunch of bugs, which I'll be going into right now. The first one is they revisited this bug where if you have a bunch of mobs in a pen, they can clip through blocks upon the chunks being unloaded and reloaded sometimes. This is actually a pretty old bug from way back in 2013. So now this should be fixed going forward. They also address a bug to do with mobs that are babies that are really crammed areas will push through blocks when they turn into adults. This should make storing large amounts of mob more consistent and shouldn't affect stuff like my turtle farm, which will still automatically kill turtles once they grow up. They also fix this really funny bug that I showed in the video where I cover 18 secrets that you can do with the lichen and glow squid. And that is if you place down the glow lichen directly into lava, it would convert it to water. Now with that being removed, you can no longer use this to get water in the nether. So if you want to do this in survival, you would have to update to the previous snapshot, get some lichen in a cave, and then get some water in the nether before updating to the full release of 1.17. In the newest snapshot, they fixed this problem that we had in the last one with these shulkers rotating weird directions, which looked really funny. There was a problem with the debug world. This is a special world that you can access by holding down alt when flipping through the world types. When loading this world up, you see that you actually spawn way down at the very bottom of the world at Y level 2 instead of being at Y level 70 where all the rest of the blocks are at. They also fix this annoying noise when stuff is inside of water and lava at the same time. You can hear it constantly makes this sizzling noise. And this is the fire extinguish noise. There was a weird bug to do with the puffer fish. When they get unloaded and reloaded, the hitbox of it would actually change. We would sometimes see this in our world here where we have all the different entities in the world sorted by size. When force updating servers from older versions, there would be an error for unable to resolve block entities or item stack, which has now been fixed. Next one has to do with small babies hopping through small gaps like this. When they would hop up here, they could sometimes take damage, despite their suffocation point being below their hitbox, which is red line compared to the white line. Now this affected baby zombies, piglins, husk, villager zombies, and baby villagers. They also fix a similar suffocation problem with baby cows and baby llamas, as well as with baby turtles. They fix another desync bug, which is if the player would dismount while standing on farmland while riding a horse or boat, and the farmland turns into dirt. And you can see when I shift, I actually get green synchronized with the horse. Now when the player is in this mode where he can walk around, it's like a ghost mode. The player can move around and he won't take damage, but he technically isn't there so he can't interfere with blocks and entities. They also fix the desync bug when a player would enter and exit a boat very quickly on a leggy server. My guys are actually using this on my sub server to desync so they could go exploring without having a risk of dying. They also address this bug where if you're in a boat and you dismount, it makes you face away from the boat rather than the boat you just came out of. There was a problem to do with large amounts of copper blocks causing lag, which when a server would try to do its world save would make it take forever. And this is probably due to copper scheduling the changing of the variations days in the future. 
I finally fixed this bug that we talked about with my snow farm, which is sometimes when it snows, it actually puts water into these, like it's raining here instead of snow, even though we are definitely in a extreme hills and quite high up. Also during our streams, we did update our outer snow farm to be like our lava farm where we have one in every single row. And I'll have a new video covering all the 1.17 farms when they start releasing some of the new biomes. There was some z-fighting occurring when sand was going through powder snow. Z-fighting is just when the game can't decide which one to show on top. By far the most bug fixes in this version has to do with the gulk sensor. Now when you're in boats, it does activate these things. And now they added it so also being in a minecart will activate them. Bell ring has been added to their detection as well. So has drinking milk. Filling cauldrons with liquids will now also make vibrations. Fire charge setting fire has been added, as well as extinguishing a campfire. Endermen picking up blocks or dropping them will also be noticed by them. Now player eating stuff can be noticed by the skulk sensor, but mobs eating stuff has now been added as well. Buckets of fish have also been added, as well as shulkers opening and closing. This will be useful in our shulker shell farm for more precise detection. Now there was some inconsistencies with them detecting mobs that could fly, like they could detect bees, but they couldn't detect stuff like bats, blazes, chickens, endermen, gas, phantoms, vex, and withers, which now has been changed. There were some inconsistencies to do with item frames. When you place them, it activates the skulk sensor, but removing them didn't, which they fixed. Squid spawning has been added so that skulk sensors will detect it, as well as gas shooting and ravengers roars. They also changed it so they can detect stuff like boats being placed, mine carts, candles placed on cakes, creepers being set off by flint and steel, lighting TNT, placing stuff into flower pots, books being placed onto lecterns, collecting water or honey with bottles, breaking bees nest or hives in creative mode, ender dragons shooting fireballs, cakes being eaten. They also fixed some bugs where skulk sensors were repeatedly being activated with flame arrows. You can see this arrow is constantly sending out new signals. Also while being crouched and shooting a flame arrow would cause them to notice that when it shouldn't. And they also change it so when ocelots sneak towards prey they won't send off signals since they are technically sneaking similar to a player. And they fix a problem where the player was sneaking in the water was still activating the sensors. So the new changes to the skulk sensor look like this with their redstone values beside them. Now since they change it so that you can mod the game but you can have higher Y levels and lower Y levels than in previous versions, there was a problem that villages would always spawn at Y level 0 despite the world being set to be lower. And another problem that they fix to do with the Y level change is going into a dimension that has a height higher than the maximum height crashes the game. Another problem to do with the world limit being able to be modified so it can be higher is that the set block command when it place block above the 1024 height limit. Another bug to do with the height is the game would crash if you generate a world with increased height limit and no terrain as well as feature generation were being supported by the negative Y levels. They also fixed this problem where the shulker kind of lifts the player up for a brief moment when opening up. They also fix a parity problem between bedrock and java. In java we have the copper blocks called copper block, lightly weather copper block, semi weathered copper block, and weather copper block. Where in bedrock they have exposed, weathered, and oxidized. So now this has been changed so that they have the same naming. Now there is still this problem where the K in weathered copper block has a capital K at the very end. You can see the new naming system where it's copper, then exposed copper, weathered, and then oxidized copper. And they fixed the capital K. Also something I forgot to mention in my previous Minecraft news review is that Minecraft Earth is coming to an end. This was the immersive reality Minecraft-like game that they introduced. They said due to the global pandemic, they are moving their energy into other aspects of Minecraft. And I'll have this link down below if you want to learn more about it. Quite a lot of changes made in this snapshot. It should be a lot of fun playing around on our snapshot testing server. And you guys can find the information on joining that server on my Discord or by joining my live stream. Both of those linked down below. And I'll see all you guys over at my Twitch live stream. Thanks everybody who subbed and left a like on this video. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.